Welcome to ye Hello, okay, I'm this thing like delayed in the little ding, letting me know it was on and whatever, so I'm not exactly sure where we started, but okay, fine. Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. Of course, I'm Dave Kelso, aka Time Warrior. This is Richard Hamilton, aka General Tate, and um, we're going to do something that we promised to do for quite a while, but schedules just have not aligned until now. So I'm going to go into screen share mode. Here we go. Um, make sure I click present to everyone. There we go. Okay, cool. Can we see the screen okay? I can see it just fine. And you can even see it clearly enough to read it? Yep. Okay, cool. So you can play narrator after I explain what this is. Okay, back on March 27, short rant, the global warming debate. Um, whenever one person stands up and says, wait a minute, this is wrong, it helps other people to do the same. So, okay. <clears throat> My post was about, it wasn't about the global warming debate itself. It was about the silliness and the stupidity of how it's conducted. Whether you believe in man-created global warming or you think it's nothing more than a globalist hoax, I would like to take a moment to say something controversial to both sides. I would like to say that both sides of the debate are an irrelevant distraction for the following reasons. Number one, both sides can agree that clear-cutting forests is a bad idea. Two, both sides can agree that polluting the air is a bad idea. Three, both sides can agree that polluting the water is a bad idea. Four. Both sides agree that switching to clean energy sources is a good idea. Five, neither side enjoys getting monetarily raped at the gas pump. Six, both sides can agree that regardless of their individual reasons for agreeing, that trashing the planet in any way has dangerous consequences and that we should stop doing it. So with that said, whether you believe in man-made global warming or not, it's completely fucking irrelevant, and both sides would rather let the planet be destroyed while having egocentric dick-wagging contests with each other about who is supposedly right and who is supposedly wrong, while corrupt corporations continue to control the ship of state as the top 1% get richer and the rest of us get fucked. You would rather name, call, and complain rather than work together, because no matter how enlightened and intelligent you think you all are, you're nothing but a bunch of butthurt fucks. Now, both sides can decide to agree that I'm an asshole for saying it like this because the truth hurts, bitches. So, yeah, of course, what's the first thing that happens? People automatically pile on to make my point for me. Of course, you know, I got some applause and stuff here. Here's a little clappy emoticons and whatever, but... um. Kajum and Valendale, they're always kind of going at each other's throats about this. Um, and both of them just dickwag. Because the thing is, in my view anyway, most of what Kajum says is actually correct. And most of what Valendale thinks is the, the political spin. Because obviously, you know, this issue is a real issue, but whenever people have disagreements on it, it's like, oh my god, you're, you're a denialist and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, nobody's denying anything. It's just that people like to, like to nitpick and bicker and bitch about the semantics. And if you don't kiss somebody's political asshole and lick their asshole and lick all the diarrhea poop out of it and go nummy nummy nums, your propaganda is so good, and give me more, then they're like, fuck you, you're a denier, and blah, blah, blah. So, like, these two were always going at each other. And the big surprise to me was that I fully expected Kajum to be more open-minded to what I was saying and for Valendale to get butthurt and block me, be like, fuck you, you're stupid, I'm not dealing with you. But the exact polar opposite happened. That, I must admit, surprised me. Because Kajim just could not handle the fact that, that I think that they're both acting like a bunch of immature little kids, exactly as what my post was about. 
And they kept both trying to debate the issue. And I'm like, guys, you know, you want to debate that, you know, that's all well and fine. But, you know, that's not actually what my post is about. Last I checked, this was my post on my journal that I made. That means I have the right to discuss any topic that I want. And anybody who doesn't want to discuss that topic doesn't have to. That's fine. There's no gun to anybody's head, you know. But they both come on like, fuck you. You're not allowed to talk about, you know, the topic that you want to talk about. You have to do what we say. You have to do what we want or fuck you. But that was totally cool because it completely makes the point of my journal here. Because neither of them were willing to actually face what I was saying. They wanted to just remain locked in the exact dichotomy that I was talking about here. And they didn't, neither of them wanted to acknowledge the elephant in the room. I was just completely shocked when it was Kajam who was like, you know, fuck you, block. And Valendale actually, for the most part, was civil. I mean, you know, I do agree. I do think that Valendale is, you know, trapped in his paradigms about weather stuff. But, um, at least Valendale didn't like crap all over me. Whereas Kajram's like, how, how dare you insinuate that, that, that my ego might have anything to do with anything? How dare you post on a topic that you want to post on and you didn't conform to my will? Fuck you, Dave, you Satan. <laughs> you know, it's like, what? So yeah, that was interesting. And this text uh, for the comments is a bit small. I can read it. You you all might have some trouble, so I'm going to enlarge so that things are easier to read. So, oh, man, where the hell should we start? I guess we could start on this bottom one. I'll just kind of take this to new tabs so we don't get confused. Would you like to narrate, Rich? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can narrate <clears throat> a little bit. Okay, yeah, as I recall, this was his first comment, too. Uh, this is where it started. Um, so, Val Valendale begins with Dave's points, or at least four of them. One, both sides can agree that clear-cutting forests is a bad idea. Actually, the climate science, and then he goes into his little dogmatic bullshit. Of, he's trying he's trying to move it back to just one side, and it's all, you know, whatever, you know. I'm right, you're wrong, you know. My side's God, the other side's the devil, you know. Don't, don't confuse the two, you're just delusional kind of stuff. Actually, the climate science deniers tend to be in favor of anything that destroys the environment. Well, I don't think there's any science behind the global warming theory that's my personal opinion but i certainly am not for uh spraying aluminum particulates into the atmosphere polluting the atmosphere so valendale you're full of shit i'm sorry <laughs> you're 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 trying to label all of us people who question the global warming theory it's not fact it's a theory regardless of how much uh mr bill gates or al gore like to you know slam their dick in your i, mouth. It's like I invented, this little I invented the propaganda. I it's, invented it's, the interwebs. I invented the interwebs. I am El Gordo. Yeah, exactly. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I don't think there is such a thing as climate science deniers and the so called deniers. I don't, I never see any of them going, yeah. Let's let's spray bullshit in the air and aluminum particulates that in the polluting jet fuel and yeah, let's just crank up those those nasty petroleum motors and just turn the entire earth into a smog haven and and yeah, let's just litter and and just destroy the earth. Yeah, man, yeah, let's pour just nuclear, do that. Pour nuclear waste into the rivers and stuff. Yeah, no. I'm not that kind of person. I believe in conservation. I believe in uh, selective harvest when it comes to cutting trees down, you know, cutting down the bigger trees and allowing the smaller trees that you planted underneath of those to grow so they can get sunlight and grow into bigger trees later on. I believe in, you know, doing things efficiently, but in a way that doesn't destroy the environment. 
And I believe that if we would we would stop pussyfooting about it, industrial hemp, and and not have a baby fit about that. Yeah, and I mean, there's, yeah, we, there's, we would we wouldn't yeah, need to cut yeah, down there's, anywhere there's, near there, as many there, trees. There, 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 there's yeah, there's multiple alternatives for paper and things of that nature. I mean, plant fibers have proven wonders for paper products. I mean, hell, Coca Cola is making. I was up at Crater Lake the other day, and I was looking at a the cups that they use are made the. Uh, the wax coating that they use on the paper cups it's made of out of organic plant material i mean there's so many things you can use plants for just basic herbs and things of that nature to create compounds and oh yeah and, bio you know, the, 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 the earth is the earth is literally abundant yeah in materials and there's there's literally all kinds of healthy things you can do for the environment but anyway moving on to the next point and me just proving Valendale that he's full of shit and he just needs to shut his mouth and suck on Bill Gates' <laughs> dick. And like a little cunt. <laughs> proved him wrong because I'm a climate. Climate science. More like climate theory, you fuck face. <laughs> okay. Number two. Both sides can agree that polluting the air is a bad idea, which is true. Actually, the climate science deniers often try to argue that increased CO2 is good for the environment and methane is nothing to worry about. I want to I want to comment on that. Increased CO2 is good for plants because the exactly. plants then put out exactly. the oxygen that we need. Exactly. Now, if we're killing all the plants, then increased CO2 is definitely a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's essentially that's essentially of equivalent of the movie Apollo 13 where the rising CO2 levels are getting increasingly toxic and the crews getting towards asphyxia and hypoxia and all that stuff lack of oxygen in the blood increase CO2 levels and they do nothing about it that's bad but if you've got CO2 scrubbers filters that filter out that air clean out the CO2 and keep the oxygen flowing there's the balance. You gotta have balance. You gotta. That's have, what plants you gotta do. Have, you gotta have your hakuna to your matata. You can't have <laughs> one or the other. You've gotta. You gotta have balance there. Yes, yeah, CO2 is totally. great for the environment. Plants love CO2. Plants can't get enough CO2. They need CO2. Yeah. But the CO2 without the plants, that's a bad deal. Yes. No plants. Increased CO2. Very bad. And what a lot of these uh, fuckheads don't remember is the fact that the the ocean is full of phyto, phytoplankton, billions, trillions, quadrillions of metric yeah. phytoplankton just out there in the ocean doing their thing. Okay, yeah, we have toxic spills here. We have things here that affect this <coughs> and that. But yet again, in the small picture of things, that's not very much. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not yeah. saying it's right that we're doing that. I'm saying it's a small yeah. chunk of the puzzle here. I mean, you've got phytoplankton yeah. in the ocean. You've got plants. You've got multiple sources of oxygen. Now, let me let me let, let, let me let me cl let me clarify something. We're not saying that that tons of this plankton isn't getting killed, and we're not saying that it's not bad. That it's you know not horrible that it's getting killed. Yes, it's bad. But the point is, is that if we that everybody can agree we need to stop being douchebags to the ocean. Mm -hmm. So if we weren't being douchebags to the ocean, then that CO2 would be getting processed. So then increase in CO2 levels would just mean increase in plants, which means increase in right Okay. His pizza is here. He ordered pizza. I'm going to be having pizza later today too. So yeah, that's cool. But I mean, I have never not ever seen anybody walk around saying yeah man let's litter let's pollute let's destroy the ocean let's ruin the land let's do this let's do that i've seen people ignorantly think that you know like to ignorantly not realize that what they're doing is destructive and i've seen them ignorantly say oh this isn't hurting anything what's wrong with that and like refusing to see that yes actually it is doing damage I've seen people do that. That's just that's ignorance, but it's not the same thing as them willfully knowing that you know they're causing harm and being like, "Fuck yeah, man! I want to cause harm. Let's cause all kinds of harm. <laughs> harm is good. Yeah." No, 
I don't see anybody except maybe a minority of top 1% capitalist scum fucks that, you know, only care about making money and they're thinking, well, by the time the earth gets too destroyed, I'll probably be dead anyways, so who cares, you know, so, you know, they're, they're just being a bunch of douchebags, but um, I don't think that that extreme, extreme minority speaks for the majority of people, you know, just like I don't think that ISIS speaks for the majority of Muslims. I don't think that, you know, the people who slaughtered millions on the, on the fucking, you know, Christian crusades speaks for Christianity. I don't think, I don't think most Christian children are sitting there going, I want to go kill me a Muslim. No, I, I really don't. And, you know, so in this society, we like to think that a minority of idiots speaks for the majority of everybody simply because the majority of everybody has been trained to have low self-esteem and no confidence and they don't speak up for themselves. Whereas the majority, or excuse me, the minority of idiots have foolishness and confidence in equal measure. They speak up, they speak really loudly and, you know, they spout their shit. And so, you know, the majority isn't speaking up because this extreme minority is like intimidating them because the minority, or excuse me, the majority has been trained by society to be terrified and complacent and, oh, I better not speak up. I better not make waves. Otherwise, somebody's going to come after me or whatever paranoid thing it is that, you know, the person's been taught to think because paranoia is rampant. I mean, you know. Why do you think kids don't ask questions in school? Uh-oh, I better not ask a question. I might get in trouble. The teacher will call me a troublemaker. I might get sent to the dean's office. And yes, that's true. That's the way schools teach people. But that extends forward through adult life as well. And so, you know, the majority is afraid to speak up because these minority of foolish, loudmouth morons um, are so intimidating to the, the majority who just, you know, doesn't want to be screwed with. It's like, maybe if I keep quiet, everybody will leave me alone, you know. But then everybody sees that the majority isn't speaking up. So then they just assume that these minority of idiots are, are, are speaking in an official capacity for the majority. Like, oh, well, the majority aren't saying boo to this, so they must be speaking for the, for the majority then. The majority must be agreeing with it by default of the majority not saying anything. Which, you know, that's a load of shit. The majority are just terrified to say anything because as soon as anybody says anything, someone like Kajim or Valendale or William Black or whoever, you know, whatever loud mouth is going to pop up and go, no, 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 Blah! you know, they're going to pop up. And then most people don't want to deal with that. Most people, you know, just, you know, they just want to live their existence in peace so they don't want to have the audacity to you know freaking state an opinion and say hey i don't agree with that guy and then for that guy to be like Bleh, screw you i am god Bleh, you know so it's not that the majority masses agree with the minority of idiots but everybody thinks that the minority of idiots somehow represents the majority in an approved official way simply because the majority have been trained to be too terrified to speak up you know confidence and foolishness in these minorities are in equal levels where the majority are too scared to speak although thankfully that is starting to change not only with th with things like PSEC episodes but you know you know, lots of other different people doing lots of other different things and speaking up and saying, hey, these minority of idiots don't speak for the rest of us. Fuck you. Oh, yeah, sometimes you just got to take initiative, call bullshit when you see it, and just let things settle out as they may. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, anyway, I don't know if we've moved on into the other points. No, we, no, we haven't. I was just, okay. I was just buying okay. you some, some time oh. and just, I was just speaking, I was speaking on the, on the dichotomy of, you know, the minority does not speak for the, for the majority, but people have a tendency to think they do. So when they see some wacko nut jobs spouting a bunch of bullshit, yeah. everybody just assumes, oh, well, they must speak for the majority. ISIS must speak for all Muslims. The people who, who slaughtered millions in the Christian crusades, they must speak for all Christians. And it's like, no, 
Sorry. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, moving on to point three. Both sides can agree that polluting the water is a bad idea. Yes. And insert the dogma. Maybe I wouldn't be surprised to find some downplaying it, though. I saw apologists for freedom industries come out in defense of fresh water disposal of chemical waste by dumping it directly into rivers, even when the, when even the industries that produce the waste have diluted it first. <coughs> when the Cayuga River caught fire, industry apologists tried to argue against regulating fresh water waste disposal. Yet again, that's like marital status of the number five. That's like saying, yeah. well, because this company said this, that means all of these climate deniers also agree. It's like, no, those are two different things. I think that company's fucked. I think yeah. that company ought to be shut down. I think that company ought to be, you know, thrown away. But let's not let's not focus on just American companies. They're regulating the shit out of American companies. What people like Valendale fail to realize is, okay, a $25,000 DEQ fine, like, okay, here's a local story that had just happened. Medford Water Commission uh, dumped 1.65 million gallons of highly chlorinated toxic water into one of our local creeks. The DEQ fines them $25,000. $25,000 to a normal, you know, bread and butter person, that's a lot of money. To a corporation, ha, that's burger and fries. That's nothing. They're not, not going to care about that. Not even. That's a penny. That's a penny. That's like that's like that's, doing, that's like that's, that's like that's the equivalent of doing a hundred and a forty, and the cop pulls you over and says, "I'm giving you a ticket, one penny." Like really, that's mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So every time I speed, I'm gonna get a one penny ticket. Yeah. Okay, I think I can afford a couple of bucks a month. Yeah, exactly. No, it's 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 so small. It's not even funny. It's a tiny little, you know. These corporations don't care, and if they regulate the shit out of them here in the states. They'll just move their corporations over to China where the regulations aren't existent, and they'll continue doing the same thing there. And, and it, pollute the people there. Oh, and speaking and speaking of apologists, if I may be so bold to say, as statements like what Valendale is making is it basically is being a climate theory apologist. And it's the it, it, even even calling people who have alternative views climate change deniers would be like the equivalent of saying those niggers because it's a derogatory. It's like, well, you know, those those climate denying niggers they just hate white people because they're climate denying niggers and they they hate white people and white people love us some climate we love us some climate yeah ooh climate nature's our friend white people the good guys but them climate denying niggers yeah they big evil bad niggers hate nature niggers bad that is like exactly how this sounds when i see people talk like that and i'm like lol like wow mm -hmm. But anyway, moving on to point four. <laughs> that was a funny one. <laughs> moving on to point four. Both sides can agree that switching to clean energy sources is a good idea. Yes, it is. Enter in the dogma. Actually, the climate science deniers are also generally against green energy when and spread lies and propaganda against it. Casium constantly spreads misinformation about wind power and has targeted solar as well. And so goes the trend. Okay. I don't agree with global warming, the man-made global warming. I, I agree with natural global warming. It's been going on with yeah. the climate for <clears throat> billions billion, of years. Billions of years. I do agree that we exacerbate, ex exacerbate existing conditions, though. We take an oh, existing yeah. condition and we make it ten times worse. I do agree oh, with yeah. that. No, we take hundreds of degree differences and we go, oh, oh, way out of line. But anyway, the funny thing is, um, you know, I, you know, for one, agree with clean energy. Now, I will say that Casium has a point. Casium is correct when you're talking about on mass industrial scale, wind and solar are very inefficient, but on an individual basis, like <laughs> highly efficient, turbine, highly efficient, like having a little tiny wind turbine on your roof. Do you think birdies going to go near that and having solar panels? You have all the power you need. Yeah, you no know? kidding. And you have backup storage batteries and things of that nature. You have all the power you're going to ever want. So what now, the, so, on, so, on so mass what? scale, on mass scale, things like hydropower, um, 
you know, there's all kinds of clean, efficient energy, geothermal, which we have the technology to access geothermal anywhere in the world nowadays, even though they won't tell you that. Yeah. And, you know, even even tidal energy alone, just tidal oh, yeah. energy can mm -hmm. can can provide the world's power a thousand times over, much less anything else. So there's all these different sources. And um, what was I going to say about this? Um, when. When people look at posts like what Kajem is making, Kajem's not saying, oh, well, you know, fuck wind energy and, and, you know, that's all bad. What he's saying is there are responsible and irresponsible ways to use wind energy. And then, you know, someone comes in and says, fuck you. You're, if you say anything negative about wind energy at all, you're anti-wind. That would be like if I said... Well, use a hammer safely. Don't hit yourself in the thumb with it. Oh, he's saying that it's possible to hit yourself in the thumb with a hammer. He's a hammer denier. He's a hammer hater. He's against hammers. He needs to shut up. You know, and it's like, what? It's not what I said. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a common trend amongst, uh, you know, the quote-unquote uh, what people mostly the the bad type of new agey kind of wishy washy kind of uh, you know green peace type people you know you you add any criticism whatsoever of how to make something more efficient or better they automatically take that as you're against them you hate them fuck you go to hell you have no right to speak you're just a denier you're for the corporations it's like no I'm not I'm just saying you guys could be if you guys would pull your heads out of your asses, wash the diarrhea out of your hair, you'd realize, oh, maybe we can take this technology and make it better than it already is and make it so efficient, in fact, that the establishment wouldn't have any other alternative but to switch to it. No, but people like fighting each other more than they like fighting the establishment. It's all dick wagging. They want to shake yeah. their fist. They want to shake their fist and go, Daddy beat me as a child, and mommy was never there, and bullies always harass me. So I'm going to take years of pent up frustration, and I'm going to launch it out on the nearest anybody using any excuse. Just like, just like, just like how a lot of these cops are bullies, because the, 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 a lot of these bullies start to realize, you know, they graduate high school or get kicked out or whatever the case may be, and they're like, wait a minute, if I bully people in high school, I get in trouble. But if I become a cop, I can bully people legally. I can bully all the people I want. And then they have to listen to me. You know. So there's a lot of bullies that join the police force. I'm not saying all cops are bullies, but a lot. So it's like the same idea. Whether you're talking about cops or online web forums about topics or whatever. There's a lot of people that are all butthurt because they had a shitty childhood or whatever. Well, gee, welcome to the fucking club. The whole earth has been a psychological fuck over for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Join the club. Welcome to earth. And so they just want to rage out and lash out and vent. And they want to do it destructively while acting as if they're doing something constructive. Because they felt like a victim all their life. They want to seem like a hero. In order to seem like a hero, they need a nemesis. And they just pick anybody. Mm. Anyway, moving on. You replied, paradigm shifting replied, with respect, all I really see is your opinions and no facts. Thus, thus once more giving credence to my conclusion that both sides prioritize only on bitching at each other and neither side is actually willing to do anything about anything. Thank you for proving my point with, with stunning clarity. And that's totally true. With respect, insert propaganda website here. yeah yeah with, with <laughs> respect insert one website that we probably looked up on google in a you know 15 second search or less or less that you probably didn't even look at but just barely skimmed over and said oh that looks extreme enough and ludicrous enough for my opinion even though there's probably some facts in there that you probably failed to look at because you were too busy trying to find something to get on the other side oh look at them Oh, those demons. Oh, they're evil. Anyway, it's not an opinion that there are climate change deniers promoting the idea that increased CO2 levels is good. Wait a minute. Is good? Don't you mean are good? Are you that retarded? Did you forget how to spell? Did you forget your proper grammar and I'm, pronunciation? I'm not retarded. I'm a common core student. 
is good for the environment. The only thing I think is actually an opinion. I wouldn't be surprised, which is followed by the reasons I wouldn't be surprised. Just don't use just don't use the word token or I'll have to give you shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just, you know, yet again, Valendale brainwashed into the idea that you know there's no other, you know, there's no other opinion. We gotta slam things into a box. It's just all one giant, you know, evil plot to destroy us, truth seeker, crusaders of God, you know, her bringing the truth to the world. It's like, yeah, whatever. You know, um, why don't I pull my pants and shit on your shoes? Because that's pretty much what's gonna happen either way. There's a difference between being the change and bitching about the change. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's like you know going into a daycare you got all these little kids screaming and crying over you know worthless it's like nasty smelling toys i'm, do and yanking. I'm doing my part i'm being the change i'm sitting here bitching that's yeah that's that's being the change that's, while, scri that's while scribbling <laughs> while scribbling nasty pictures of the kid they don't like across the room i'm being the change look at me i'm making something it's like yeah whatever i'm making a okay, difference in this world and paradigm shifting <clears throat> excuse me excuse me and paradigm shifting Yet again, Dave Kelso. Again, you are presenting what you are presenting me only serves to make my original point, and there's nothing anyone can say that won't absolutely prove my point with perfect clarity. Anything that any faction says against the other is proof that bickering is the only priority of both factions. You are still proving this, and thus my point is made invalidated. I am simply not entirely sure if you're pretending to get my point. Pretend, or pretending, if, pretending, if, pretending not to get my point. No, yeah, that's what I thought I said. If I didn't, I you didn't. didn't. <laughs> okay. Pretending not to get my point, or if I am speaking so completely outside of the box of your paradigm that my point is invisible to you. Anyone from the either side, from either side whose priority is to bicker, bitch, and disagree, and debate are all equally a part of the same problem. It doesn't matter what subtopic is being bickered about, who said what, who, who on what website, who is claiming what about what, all you're doing is bringing up bickering points. All I am saying is that bringing up bickering points is the only priority of both sides, and that neither side wants to put disagreements aside and to figure out what everyone actually agrees on and then take action on that. You're proving that bickering is your priority and that you that solving the problems is not. This is true of both sides. Go look up the word in the dictionary and go look up the word dichotomy. If half of one of your opponent your, your half of, of one. your half of one of your opponents on the <clears throat> are on the other half. One coin, two wings, one bird, one snake, two heads. Want more metaphors? You can't win a debate with me about this because I'm not debating. I'm not taking a side. So there's nothing either side of you could. There's there's nothing for either side, for either side for you to attack. I'm saying both sides are full of shit and are two halves of one coin. I'm saying both sides are idiots. Both sides are wrong. Both sides are missing the point, and both sides are part of the problem, not the solution. I've said the same about truthers, new agers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, ex I respect your free will right to be wrapped up in this dichotomy if you want to. By all means, roll in it to your own destruction if you'd like. I just enjoy pointing out the elephant in the room, or the pink elephant, or whatever you want to call it. And General Tate, a.k.a. Rich Hamilton, yep. also and in the comments. Insert me. Insert <laughs> myself. And I just reply, I'm going to have to agree with the article. Basic science shows that plants <coughs> thrive in, CO2, in a CO2-rich environment and in turn produce more oxygen. All the globalists push on man-made global warming is, is nothing more than for carbon taxes. They succeeded with that agenda in Australia, and the economy down there has been poor ever since. Although I have to agree, I have to agree with this journal, 
as well that both sides agree to these points. I know I do. And I just relist all the points. Both sides can agree that clear cutting force is a bad idea, et cetera, so on and so forth. And then the conversation forks again. And Valendale. Um, I, Everyone. Um, you missed oh. it. I replied oh. to him. Yeah. Well, no, that's the. Wait a minute. No, no I did, that's I just, the one you already said. Wait, wait. Uh, no. I already wait. stated that one. See, it's the one I just looked at. That was the uh, one I was just reading. Oh, yeah, okay, and then we're going here. Well, then let's let's go one further, one deeper. <clears throat> Let's go deep into the butthole. Okay. <clears throat> and Valendale replies, everyone is entitled to their own opinions, but not their own facts. Okay. Attributed to so many people that I don't even know who actually said it first. Well, who said it first? Who is a pretty broad conundrum. Those, those nature-hating niggers. I mean, climate change. You know, I mean, who? Who is who? Who's what? <laughs> Who's where? It's like the five W's. It's, it's, it's bland. It's like it could be anything. We Climate must, change. We must fight the war on terror. <laughs> we must fight the war on terror for the new world order. I am George W. Bush and, or, well, George H. W. Bush. You're either with us or you're one of the terrorists. And those climate change deniers, aka nature hating niggers that the KKK should have should have eliminated. Yeah, because if you're not with us, you're with the terrorists, and well, we're the terrorists too. So no matter what, you're with the terrorists. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like Yeah. But anyway, he continues on. Climate change deniers are as wrong on the facts about global warming as young Earth creationists are about evolution. Yet again, both opinions not backed by any scientific fact whatsoever. Yep. Even though, you know, it's entirely plausible that, you know, the Earth could be 4,000 years old. Who's to deny what the creator of the universe can and cannot do? We're basing it based on our perspective of a limited spectrum of science, which is an infinitesimally tiny perspective. Anyway, all ideas are not equal. Okay, that's a total fascist idea. That sounds like Hitler talking right there. Was nicht fein, nein, 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 slamming his hand on the table. All ideas are not equal and equally deserving of respect. And I reject your rel relativistic <clears throat> something, big word, weird, haven't seen re re Relativistic equivocations and premise okay in other <clears throat> words pseudo intellectual ad hominems uh -huh. progress is made through innumerable conflicts and debates uh no that just sends you far backwards and you forgot to capitalize progress because you must learn more with common core obviously let's let's ignore history let's ignore that you know yeah through, yeah yeah through through, because, through the because, debate because government. fighting with each other really solves problems right yeah beating the shit out of each other over and over again mm. proves that you're just right all the time no you're just going to make the other guy hate you einstein's more. doesn't do anything Einstein's definition of insanity, or as I like yes. to call it, Einstein's definition okay, of insanity. Okay, I'm going to slam my hand to death with the hammer over and over again, and it, at some point there's going to be a flower that's going to pop out of one of the fractured bones, because <laughs> that's what I said. Doing the same thing over and over, but yeah. expecting different results each time. But then we put, or we take the same thing. And we put it in a box, and we we make the wrapping paper completely different, so we can point to it and go, "No, we're not repeating the same thing. It's different." See, before the wrapping paper on this exact same thing was pink, and now the wrapping paper on this exact same thing is blue. It's the same thing in the same wrapping paper, but because we changed the color, we're gonna say, "No, it's not the same thing. This is completely different this time." Yeah. Okay sure so if i if i take a shit on your face from one perspective it's rude because i just shit on your face but if if i if i use different words and present it differently then shitting on your face is a health benefit you should want me to shit on your face okay mm. 
minds are affected a few at a time bullshit doesn't wash itself away no i'm pretty sure i washed my own bullshit out of my mind i'm pretty sure i purged that by myself living example proof if you don't believe me i don't really give a shit because <laughs> who, who's more of the proof than me witnessing myself do something so you're going to tell me my eyes are lying to me really hmm. i love the biological it. function is lying to me my mind is lying to me really I, I I love it when people who who adhere to really strict narrow doctrine say my mind is open. You're the closed-minded one. <laughs> I love uh, that. Right, right. Well, you're sitting there presenting another perspective, and they're the one raging against it like mm -hmm. a little child. I, no, no, no. That's not right. Yeah. You know what it's I love? Like, I I love it when people are like I. Uh, like you try to show them evidence to something. I don't want to look at it because I already know it's bullshit, and therefore I don't have to look at it because it would be a waste of my time and an insult to my intelligence. That's not science. That's egotism. Yes. No, there's absolutely no science behind egotism. That's just taking your personal views, your own personal dogmas, and making a religion out of it. And trying it's not science. It's not backed up by anything. It's just yeah. your opinions boosted on steroids and trying to do science based on predetermination is not science because science is about exploring all avenues and seeing what happens and weighing the data what most modern so-called pseudoscientists do is they go i already believe this so i'm going to only look at all data which agrees with my platform but i'm going to shun any other data because i already know all that's wrong so i don't even need to look at it and it's like okay whatever that's fine but that's not science mm -hmm. exactly by pure definition it's not science mm -hmm. and then i said if you both could miss my point any more uh, epically i'd feel guilty that i don't have any special award to give you both lol yep so it's just like, wow, airplane over the head. Was your, and then Valendale replies, was your point that all ideas are equal and no one is right about anything and we should all join hands and sing kumbaya and shared bewilderment? That's rhetorical. I know this hyperbolic straw man of your actual point, but I reject your presumptions and false equivocations. <clears throat> oh, okay. So people being allowed their perspective, they're not allowed. They do not agree with me. Well, I it's, would say no, you are correct. False. I would say you are correct from a scientific standpoint because every person on this planet believes to the nail that their perspective is the almighty God. So mm -hmm. therefore on that perspective, that would mean they are equal in their arrogance. Mm -hmm. Hey, let me. Let I'm me... saying it's good. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah. that everybody mm -hmm. is entitled to their opinions, and they're all going to think equally high of their opinions. Exactly. Believe me, I deal with people every day who have that. I mean, you know, look at syndrome. look at look at just as an example, the KKK. Do, do you really think does it, who who thinks that the KKK actually thinks that they're wrong? Who who thinks? That the KKK are sitting there like, I know I'm wrong, I know I'm full of shit, but I'm just going to go out and trick everybody into what I'm saying. Ha 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 ha. No, they're not sitting there thinking that. They, they really think that black people and so on are evil. They really think that they're this dangerous menace that needs to be exterminated. They, and they really think that they are doing the, the loving, right, moral thing by killing black people because these black people are so evil and da-da-da-da-da. They really think that. Honest to God, they really think it. They're not sitting there going, well, I don't actually believe that, but I just want to troll everybody around me, so I'm just going to act like I do because I enjoy being hateful. Ha, ha, ha. From their perspective, they're not being hateful. As was uh, um, from a line in Inglorious Bastards, um, the one French guy was talking talking to the, the Nazi, and um, the French guy asked the Nazi, he's like, you know, what did these Jews ever ever do to you? You know, why don't why don't you just just leave them alone? Just let bygones be bygones. You know, why why go around and ex exterminating all these Jews? And the Nazis like. Do you have anything against rats? Did they do anything to you personally? And he goes, no. And he said, 
but if you saw one running around your home, would you kill it? And he said, maybe. But do you have anything against the rat? Why are you killing the rat? Are you hateful against the rat? No. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not promoting Nazism with that. I'm just saying that from the Nazi perspective, they're not doing anything wrong from their view. I'm not saying that, oh, they're not doing anything wrong. I'm saying they don't believe they are. They're not sitting there like, oh, I know I'm doing something wrong, but I'm just going to fucking troll everybody. No, they honestly are so delusional they think they're doing nothing wrong. So that's the point. And then you reply yet again. Nope, not my point at all. Not even close. The idea of joining hands and singing Kumbaya is Nazism it w and will never happen because it's impossible for all humans to share the same view about everything. And in any attempt to force or coerce another human into a different point of view is Nazism and its tyranny. Utopianism is an impossible Nazi wet dream. So nope, not what I was implying at all. Let me do my best to be a bit more cutting with my point with the hopes that you might understand it. You don't have to agree with it, but you at least know what I was saying. It would be a, if you knew it, but if you knew at least what I was saying, it would be a plus. I'm saying both sides are idiots, dicks, arrogant fucks, all about dick wagging and ego games that no one on any side of this issue wants to do any good. And the only goal is to beat each other up with insults and stick your dicks in each other's faces. While accomplishing, while accomplishing a whole lot of nothing. I'm saying that these debates are nothing but childish bullshit, ego, arrogance, hubris, whatever it's spelled. A bunch of immature children who don't even have the first clue about how to discuss issues of this or any level of importance. I'm saying that both sides of this issue could give two fucks less about the environment, not really. All they care about is fighting each other and winning the battle of of ego with each other, like two dogs ripping at each other, because that's how society programs human beings to be, aggressive idiots. Both sides can debate this until the sun goes nova and not, e and not ever accomplish anything, because accomplishing something is not the goal of either side. The goal is endless fighting because it feels good to fight, nothing more. And the fact that none of you can stop and say, okay, Dave, we accept that we all disagree on a lot of shit, so let's explore what we might actually agree on and figure that out, because fighting over what we disagree is on is a waste of time. Let's see, discover what we agree on instead of ripping each other like a bunch of pissed-off retards. I'm the Kamikaze City. I don't like you. Proves by your actions as to what your actual goals are. The whole point of my journal post is to simply point out why all sides are full of shit. I'm not trying to claim anyone's science is wrong or about CO2 or anything else. I'm saying that the people doing the debating have as much integrity as a pile of shit and do not know how to do anything other than bicker like idiot children. And you all prove this because none of you are willing to stop and calm down. Ripping into each other is all both sides want to do. And you continue to prove it, as does your adversary. I'm saying both sides completely lack integrity. It's Hitler trying to argue with the KKK about racism, we use a metaphor. And both sides feel so arrogantly justified. So no, I'm not, a, I'm not suggesting you Potomkinism. I'm observing shitty, incompetent attitudes and calling it out for what it is. Whether it's you, Kajim, bitching at each other. Whether it's you and or Kajim bitching at each other, or the thousands of other uptight morons all over the online world that just want to stick their cocks in people's faces. Is my point finally clear, or do I need to draw it in crayon for you? And then all, hey. Kaj all, 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 all Kajim had to say is, Bull fucking shit! <laughs> then he blocks me. Yeah. So I do have and to say that, that Valendale has, is exerting more integrity than Kajum, and that came completely as a shock to me. I did not mm -hmm. see I did not see that coming, I will be honest. I thought the reverse flip was going to happen. Mm -hmm. 
the idea of joining hands and singing kumbaya is nazism and will never happen because it's impossible for all humans to share the same point viewpoint about anything and any attempt to force or coerce another human into a different point of view is nazism and its tyranny utopianism is an impossible nazi what dream so no not what what i was implying at all valendale decided to pull that you don't have to agree with it but you if you at least knew what i was saying it would be a plus and then he replies with this dogmatic stuff you know maybe it would help people understand what you were saying if you didn't casually throw around words like Nazism and utopianism and such ridiculous broad statements of questionable implications as attempting to force or coerce another human into a different point of view is Nazism like you've been watching Alex Jones all day. Okay, there's throwing something <laughs> in the box. Yeah, you no watch kidding. Alex Jones, motherfucker! I'm Alex Jones! I'm against the globalists! <laughs> ah! Yeah, no. I watch Alex Jones too, Valendale. I like Alex Jones. I think his persona is very funny because it pisses little butt hurt tards off like you. Now, is Alex not perfect? No. Is he, does he go off course a lot of the time? Yes, he's a human. He's not perfect. Yet again, judging the messenger, not the message. He has opinions that I don't agree with. I don't <clears> think are correct. I don't think he's God who's correct on every little thing that he ever spews out of his mouth, you know. But I like Alex. I think Alex does a good job, and I think he presents a lot of good, useful information and really throws some cool shit out there, you know? And I think that can be said by a lot of people. I don't and, necessarily, and, and, I, I don't agree with everything he says. But, and, you know. someti and sometimes Alex acts like a butthurt little bitch, too, and I'll, I'll call him mm -hmm. on this as quickly as I call anybody else on anything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and the, the 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 absolute minority of content that I watch comes from Alex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I can only take him in limited doses, to be honest. Um, well, he is kind of what you would call one hundred proof. <laughs> he's very rough. He, yeah. I, I I saw this Infowars uh, ad for him, and he's like, "It's hard for people to handle you when you're at hundred proof." And I'm like, "Yeah, that would be Alex. Hundred proof." Yeah, really rough, really rough going down. You just take a shot of it. And you're like, mm. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's but but, <laughs> but, yeah. I, but but I but I find it I find it funny, especially on an art site, that people are so narrow minded about about the use of metaphor metaphoric speaking and euphemism. Oh, yeah. they're, 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 they're so yeah. locked down they, they look at it they look at a word and a term and they say nope there's no other frame of reference other than what i singularly think it's supposed to mean fuck everybody else and then when anybody uses that word or term it, it doesn't dawn on them that that maybe there's there's more than one context for a particular word or term that maybe the world isn't black white up down just one thing mm -hmm. or the other maybe reality is a cake not a light switch and as we know, with a cake, if you change one ingredient just slightly, you end up with a whole different cake. And that's the way reality works. But some people think it's a light switch. It's either on or it's off. It's up or it's down. And they make opposition fight, you know, opposites fight each other, which is as stupid as saying the right side of your body has to battle the left side of your body until one destroys the other. And it's really fucking ridiculous, in my opinion. And again, this just totally makes my point. Like, this is the type of of you know view that i'm running into here you know people who are indoctrinated narrow thinkers and you know no offense to valendale that's just my my opinion of the way he comes off he's very attacking he's very self-righteous he wants to conquer and dominate well dave you don't know me how can you say that your actions dude your actions look what you're doing your actions you're saying no dave you're not allowed to use any terminology except in the context that i say is right that i say is valid everything else can go fuck itself there is no other way but my pers perspective fuck you you're using big pseudo intellectual articulate words to say that but arose by any other name as shakespeare said Oh, you're using Shakespeare. You must be a hippie, stupid, like, like, li like literature nerd or something. You're, you're a lit major, and you, you wear, you wear sweaters and sitting in Starbucks and, and sip lattes because you quoted Shakespeare. Yeah. Okay. All right. Whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Talk about, uh, you know, using uh, slurs. You know, using uh, profi profiling type slurs, you know, 
about as bad as being using racist slurs, if you will, profiling. But anyway, and at least and at least you know when I call someone an idiot, I acknowledge that that's my opinion, not an absolute fact. And I don't get all butt hurt when they call me a nut job or delusional or whatever. I'm like, okay, that's their right to their opinion. I have the right to think they're a narrow-minded, indoctrinated idiot, and they have the right to think I'm some conspiracy nut, New Ager, Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, whatever enemy camps they want to throw me into. Because I've, I've noticed liberals think I'm con I'm conservative, conservatives think I'm liberal, Republicans think I'm Democrat, Democrats think I'm Republican. Because I have the audacity to, to commit the ultimate blasphemy. I agree with some of what all the groups say. I disagree with what others say. And to add insult to injury, I agree and disagree for my own reasons, for my own perspectives that I don't feel anybody else has to share. And I'm not obligated to meet the appeasement or approval of anybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed mm -hmm. to feel. I'm allowed to feel how I feel. And that just like people are like, "Oh, you're the enemy." Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And that can go for a lot of us who are in that in those same shoes. But anyway, moving on. And then he highlights, you know, I'm saying both sides are idiots, and then he replies with his dogmatic stuff. Yeah, people who didn't understand the science or hold strong ideological opposition to it sometimes said the same when creationism was still a thing of significance and creationists were attacking evolution and spreading pseudoscience. It's like, oh, really, and your views aren't pseudoscience? I'm thinking they're only based on opinions and your assertions of the facts. J J J so wouldn't it be safe? Wouldn't it be safe to say with humanity in its current state that all, if not ninety nine point nine percent of science is in fact pseudoscience mm -hmm. because we're making judgments mm -hmm. on the, the the fabric of time and space. We're making judgments about God. We're making judgments about this. We're making judgments about that black hole over there. We're making judgments about that supernova. We're making judgments about the distance of you know the universe i mean you know the visible universe i mean it, it's it's ridiculous Gen it's ridiculous gen genetics has already disproven evolution i'm not yes. i'm not saying that dna doesn't evolve i'm i'm just saying that the that it's like saying a toy truck is the real truck shut up you can't tell me otherwise i'm not saying there's no such thing as the real truck i'm just saying evolutionists have confused the toy truck for the real truck and creationists have done the same Yep, exactly. Yeah, the, the fundamentalist Christians who say the Bible is the only word on how the universe was created, there's no other reality, are just as bad as the people who say science is the only way, creationism's a crock of shit, blah, blah, blah. It's the same, it's the same thing, just change the words around and the semantics and everything involved. But anyway, moving on. Dick wagging! It's dick wagging, yes. You know what? Even if both sides are idiots and arrogant, one side is anti-science, mm -hmm. And the like, the intel and the and like the intelligent design proponents dressing up the it's anti science with pseudoscience BS that only specifically looks like science if you don't examine it closely. Oh gee, what are you doing, Mister Vale and Dale? Hmm. We are skimming everything just to find things that back up our conclusions about how reality works and not looking at any other information. Sounds like pseudoscience to me, but oh, you couldn't do that, Mr. Holy Valendale. No, I bow to you and your superior knowledge because you can do no wrong. You've obviously said so. You're God. What does God need with a starship? I'm going to bow to you like you're a deity. Okay, Apophis, let me bow to you. You're so superior. You're like raw. You can do no wrong. I mean, I could go on all day about it. You, 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 you're you're basically pointing you're basically pointing at f fingers at drug users. Meanwhile, while you're sticking this big ass huge fucking needle of heroin into your arm. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the shit. Oh man, my voice is getting real it's slow. Man, feel that heroin going in my veins. But don't be doing methamphetamine. It's like. Huh? You 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 marijuana users are evil. If you were holy and righteous, you'd be doing heroin. You marijuana <laughs> users are evil. If you were righteous, you'd be doing heroin. Heroin's good for you. Let me let me let me define science versus pseudoscience. This is real easy. 
Science is whatever the uh, the mainstream arrogant elitist buttfuckers frickin' say is real, and pseudoscience is anyone who has any other ideas or questions anything, who dares to say, hey, maybe what about this? You're crazy. You're a pseudoscientist. You're going against the doctrine. I wish more people would mm -hmm. read, read up on Einstein because our current mentality of quote unquote science is everything Einstein warns us about. I would really like some of these people to argue with Einstein, basically, you know, to, to, mm -hmm. to, to look at these Einstein quotes and try to argue how Einstein is wrong. I would love to see that. I would love to see people be like, I know more than Einstein here. Look, nobody does that because deep down inside, they know that it's a lost cause because cause they know they're full of it but i would love that i would love to see some of these people actually have the balls to to go through specific things einstein said and go, no einstein's wrong and here's why nobody does it but i'd love it if they did it would be hilarious or even try to say that tesla is wrong but anyway yeah. moving on okay yeah intelligent design okay move through that one and i don't consider fighting against pseudoscience to be an ego game if they're allowed if they're allowed they'll monopolize the media with their message they'll lie to the public they'll fool our politicians and they'll convince the people who haven't the time or the interest to examine closely that coal and oil and nuclear power are all are all will never end up we'll never need to look at any alternatives alternatives are bad and we don't need to consider what impact of increasing carbon levels in the atmosphere by 8% might have on have because us itty bitty humans who create clouds of pollution that span half the globe somehow through some miracle of our insignificance can't really change the planet. That That's was their narrative. That, That's that was hold, hold on, hold on, the hold, on, Jews. hold on, hold on, let, hold on, let me finish. That's their narrative. That's their end game. That's their only message people like you will ever hear if everyone who takes them on sit silently and lets them have their way. Now hold on. I'm going to say this to Valendale. And if the other side had their 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 little push, they do the same exact thing to the other opposite extreme and say there's no other alternative. We can only do wind power and solar power in this way. There's no other way to do it. There's only one expression of this type of inner energy use. If you don't do it this way, then it's Nazism. It's terrible for the planet. Both sides are just as bad. Okay, yeah, I'm not saying coal and oil and, you know, standard fission nuclear power are good. They're terrible for the environment. W would I say use the current constructs of what we have to get to someplace better? Absolutely. That's what we should be doing. We should be using what we've got to get where we need to go. And, you know. This is anti-critical thinking. This is saying yeah. blindly believe me because I say so and I'm right and what I say is science and what anybody else says isn't. Don't think critically. Don't question. Don't look at any other alternatives. And 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 to such an extent that it's it's like they're saying anybody who thinks in any other way needs to be silenced because, you know, it's like, yeah, most of us have not been taught to think critically. This is true. Most of us will just latch on to and believe what the fuck ever anybody says. This is how tyrants have risen the power and everything else. So what, you know, if people are thinking uncritically, then what does it matter which side the majority of people take? No matter what, but the people are thinking uncritically. I think it's better to encourage people to think critically. People don't have to agree with me. Hell, they could agree with Vale and Dale and think I'm completely full of shit. But if they're critical thinkers, let them at least say that based on what they've researched and what they've really thought. Not like, oh, all these people with degrees say that science is one thing and not another, so I'm just going to blindly believe believe what they say, and I'm not going to think critically, and I'm not going to ask, oh, really, is it? Is it really? Is there anything else? Science used to be about exploration. Now it's about adherence to dogma. And anybody who asks questions or challenges the dogma is called a pseudoscientist or a nut job or a loon or whatever. It's like, oh, you better conform to the accepted whatever. If you if you have any other thoughts or ideas about anything, you're not allowed to question. You're not allowed to say them. You're not allowed to believe anything else. And if you do, you're a horrible person and da-da-da-da-da. Look, the real problem is most people aren't taught to think critically. So as long as people are thinking uncritically, it doesn't matter who they believe. They're still thinking uncritically. 
That's mm -hmm. it's 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 two expressions of the same trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's so ridiculous. It's not even funny, you know. Um, I remember when I was in Washington D.C. Um, with my history teacher, and you know bunch of other teachers but anyway we were at the national geographic headquarters and the editor-in-chief who was also a crater graduate from the high school i graduated from um was talking about global warming and you know talking about how anybody who says anything else is a pseudoscientist and i you know when i walked out of that room i told my history teacher i'd question him you know i would literally have a discussion with him and she was like oh you you would argue him oh he's the editor-in-chief how could you how could you possibly push the oh you know she was just totally shocked by that and i was like i don't give a shit if he's the editor-in-chief or if he's you know president of the united the president states. of the united states i don't care i'd fucking argue his ass into the ground i'd fucking push his ass into the ground i'd be like look you know but you wouldn't tell him what is supposedly what you'd ask questions really what do you base this on where did you get that and he'd be like shut up I pulled it out of my science butt, and that's good enough. My butt is the holy butt of science. Anything I pull out of it is true. So shut up. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, yeah, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Right. You're not allowed to ask questions or, mm -hmm. or, or expect me to tell you where I got my facts. And then I love it when people think that someone else's opinion is a fact. Here's my facts. And then they give you someone else's opinion, which is based on someone else's opinion, which is based on someone else's opinion. But they're like, these are facts. See, this guy over here has got 10 degrees and, and fucks llamas in a politically correct, socially acceptable way. So he's a fact. He doesn't just have facts. He is a fact. If it comes out of his mouth, it's gold, it's God, and it's true. That's what I'm basing it on. And people don't even realize that that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna base my statistics on statistics that were based on statistics, based on statistics, based on statistics. Where's the originating facts? So let's go down the rabbit hole. It's an infinite fucking bottomless pit. But anyway, going to the point that you're going to make. Um, I was being euphemistic with my language. If you want to take metaphors to literal extremes and read more into it then what's really there, that's your right to do so if you want to do so. So if more creative language gave you their own idea, let me attempt Let me attempt to simplify it for you. Y'all bicker and bitch like children, and that wastes time and gets nothing done, and no amount of science or fancy words that, other sides spew, that either side spews at each other changes the fact that both sides lack integrity. You're both trying to force each other's views down each other's throats. It accomplishes nothing. Now, if you can understand that this this point I'm making, then you can disagree with it all you want to, but at least you'll understand what it is you're disagreeing with. I think most people who debate this stuff, including you and Kashim, do so very childishly and are only out to beat each other up with words, but otherwise accomplish nothing. Same goes for any human with the same attitude, regardless of which side of the debate they are on, how much science they know or how many degrees they may or may not hold. I'm saying that purely coming from the point of how humans treat each other, both sides have zero integrity, as humans no integrity and all ego. I see both sides as egocentric, immature, <clears throat> and who are unwilling to calm down and hear each other out. Hell, y'all can't even agree to disagree like little children, brats. Is that better? And then Valendale. It's really hard to understand what you're saying when you're constantly when you constantly do that sort of get the globalist Alex shows I'm on it ah! thing with the language like Nazism I'm probably guilty of doing something that sometimes like that sometimes though Kashim wants to hijack WikiLeaks group with anti-science propaganda uh, and bad. again and Kashim bad Valendale good <laughs> Kashim bad Valendale good yeah Bo we all know what we all we all both know what but, to animal both farm. but hurt both but hurt <laughs> Both butt hurt, both stupid. No, fuck you, Valendale good, casual bad. Yeah, the same thing. 
I don't even really have to go here with this and started in on on me a long time ago with his anti-green energy propaganda even though I've read his comments he's not anti-green energy he's just questioning the very premise of it like any of us he's either a paid mouthpiece or a perfect shill either way I've decided I'm not going to let him just spew whatever he likes more ad hominem don't you mean don't 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 whatever he likes instead of lies <laughs> maybe that's just a little subconscious blurb he wants unchallenged whatever he likes he wants unchallenged i can see it i'm going to debunk him i'm going to heckle him i'm going to call bullshit when i see bullshit i'm not going to do it f i'm and i'm not doing it for him i'm doing it so that other people can see because i'm god and my my view's right he's wrong anybody who unfair. dares question anything is evil and a fringe scientist and a loon you better nothing dare not question change. anything ever nothing will ever change the mind of someone like Kashim. he may not even believe this the stuff he posts but they're there is calling the BS in front of others. You may think that's childish and egocentric. I think that's how the internet goes and how society progresses. Because I'm God and I'm doing justice for the holy righteousness of the Lord. And that's what God wants us to do is to call people on their bullshit and send them to hell. Be Amen. Be because beating... We you gotta send them to hell. Hallelujah. And then you got the organ playing in the background all freaking crazy. We because, gotta send the non-believers to hell, and we gotta pray, we gotta persecute those who don't believe in the climate science. And I'm living hell, and you're gonna go to hell if you don't believe everything that I'm saying. Because I'm preaching to the Lord God, and you are a sinner, and you are bad. And then you got like the black choir singing in the background and all that shit. And I'm just sitting here doing the Picard face palm, and I'm just like, Jesus, Sage Christ, they know not what they do. <laughs> no kidding. I, they know not what they do. Yeah, you know, you know, be, because beating people up worked so well before the internet, right? Mr. Valendale, tear down this wall. <laughs> Mr. Valendale, tear down this wall. And again, I'll remind people that the whole point of this post was not to debate the issue of climate change at all it was for me to make my point that both sides just be i don't think we really need i don't think we i don't think we really need to even go through all the comments i think just what we've said has made the point clear enough so loud in fact that it's not even in in any question of contestation i mean you know the arrogance here is just okay off the charts let's uh, uh, let's see how much okay so I mean, all it's like basically all of this is like basically both Valendale and Kajim were essentially telling me you're not al allowed to post a topic you want to post on you have to go into the climate change debate you're not allowed to say that both sides are, are acting stupidly and immaturely you're not allowed to have that as a topic you have to go into the debate and Dave, shame on you if you don't. I'm going to block you. I'm going to call you poopy head, whatever, da, 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 da. But shame on you if you don't. Dave, you're not allowed to post a journal about what you want. You're not allowed to have your opinions. You're not allowed to think both sides are full of it. You have to take a side. You have to. You have to. You're not allowed to take your own side. You're not allowed to think critically. You have to conform. There's only two sides to anything, and you have to conform to one. Otherwise, you're a bigger loon than the enemy side. Yeah, you have to conform, and yeah, you're not allowed to talk on anything that we say that you're not allowed to talk on. If you talk on anything that we don't want you talking on, you're a bad boy. Bad, bad, bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's just... It's just a dick wagging contest. You can tell they want to stick each other's dicks in each other's assholes. I mean, it's just like, you know, big wet gay. You know, it's like, damn it, you're gay. You know, you may not be this gay, but damn it, you're trying. Yeah. You know what I would suggest? Get a room. Exactly. Man. Oh, Casium. Oh, Casium. Oh, yeah, Casium. Oh, you're so wrong, Casium. Oh, you're bad, Casium. 
Oh, now look, now look, Casham sounds like Valendale, except that I'm backing up my argument with facts, and he's screaming liar, and with nothing but propaganda to back claims when you can present me with videos of skeptics saying we were polluted. Both are saying, yeah, I just ask it to, blah, blah, blah. Both are saying the same thing, the two different expressions. They're both accusing each other of the same thing. They're both accusing uh -huh. each other of being pseudoscientists. They're both saying that they have to attack each other for the good of humanity, because obviously, you know, attacking people has just worked so well throughout history. You know, oh, yeah. obviously right now all of the world's problems are solved and we have a perfect, peaceful, technological world right now because fighting and killing and attacking and beating each other up for thousands of years just solved all the world's problems. So here we are. There's no pollution. There's no fighting, no war, no genocide. We're all perfectly happy because all the thousands of years of fighting has solved all the world's problems. Yeah, right. Whatever it is you're smoking, I don't want any. Mm -hmm. We got to go on the Holy Crusade for the Lord Allah. No, it's God. No, it is Allah infidel. No, it's God. No, no it is Allah. It's source energy. Fuck you. It's the Tao. It's the all that is. It's, it's yeah, it's shut up. Tao. It's Tao. It's all it's that the is. the Dow Jones Industrial Index. You know that's who God is, because when the stock market's up, everybody's smiling. They <laughs> don't I, say I, otherwise. I, I, I was referring to Middle Eastern religious stuff. Or not Middle Eastern, not Eastern religious stuff when I say the Tao. The Tao or the Tao. Um, oh, the ta oh, the Tao. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the... And, the, and then there's Lao Tzu. Source energy, all that is. God... Hey, man, what's up? It's Jesus. Oh, you didn't say Jesus, so you can't be referring to the same person. You're evil. You're not allowed to speak Spanish. Fuck you. Jesus spoke English. I have proof. <laughs> the Pope may be French, but Jesus is English. You're on. <laughs> it's the same type of argument. Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. No, laddie, Jesus is Scottish. When they start... No, Jesus is African. When they start... No, Jesus is Chinese. When they start... Oh, no, Jesus is Korean. No, Jesus is Japanese. Uh, no, white man. Asians. No, Jesus is Indian. When no, they... Jesus is our Indian. You're <laughs> stupid. You're not Indians. You're Native American. When they start jailing skeptics, maybe you'll figure it out. Wait a minute, Kajum. When they start, haven't they been doing that for the longest time? If you say say too much against the mainstream and you get popular enough, you end up in Guantanamo Bay or trumped up charges or murdered or whatever. I mean, yeah. when they when they start jailing skeptics, they started a long time ago. Where have you been? Oh, when they when they start, probably too busy banging Valendale in the butthole. Da da dum da da dum da da dum 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 da da dum da da dum da da dum. Just like just just like the Kentucky just like the Kentucky Derby. I already know we're living in the fourth Reich, my friend, until enough people awaken, they jail and abuse and blah, blah, blah. Yep. Totally. The only reason the majority of people don't get harassed is because they don't have enough personnel to harass the majority. If they, if they did, they would. They just don't do the lack of manpower. Mm -hmm. exactly. but, but if they had the manpower, they would. So they have to prioritize and hammer the people that are speaking the, with the loudest voice and, and you know, making the best points. So that's always going to be the minority. But that's that's all the manpower they have. It's about manpower. Just like um, if everybody, like in a major city, peacefully and civilly 
in, in an act of civil disobedience as opposed to protest. Just everybody got out on the street and just started, you know, having a barbecue, just eating food, food folks and fun. And while they're eating, just saying, hey, you know, just having conversations. Oh, look what's going on in the world and so on and so forth. You would, you would shut down the tyrannical machine by default of everyone withdrawing their participation. And, uh, you know, if you've got like 15 million people literally, you know, out on the streets, you know, flipping burgers or whatever, there aren't enough cops, there aren't enough prisons, there aren't enough clerks, there aren't enough judges, there aren't enough lawyers to process that many people. About the only thing you could do is airstrike the city, and then you really know you're living in a tyranny. Then there's the proof right there, bam. Mm -hmm. But if everybody, instead of protesting, and the Fed, and the Fed, I don't even know what that means, but I like Ron Paul, and the Fed, instead of doing that, if they all just like, you know, 15 million people just start, just walked out front of their homes and businesses, got the little barbecue grill, started making hot dogs and sharing food around and just having conversations like a like a party. What could the cops do? This many well, people imagine, aren't allowed could, to could be you, Could you imagine if we went on for like a, a four-day block party or something like that all over the United States and in oh, yeah. all of the first four Western countries? Could you imagine what the corporations would do? They'd be sending out the police saying you need to detain these people and put them back into work by force because they're they're damaging society as we know it. Yeah, no kidding. And then the cops and then, be and, and, and then and then you know you'd have the ro the roided up cops be shooting tear gas at people and knocking barbecues over and running around with their batons and shooting off rubber shotgun bullets and you know. And you'd see these cops being like attacked by veterans and getting their heads dismembered from their bodies and hanging in trees. And then just a nice little polite sign, a fair warning to any troublemaking cops. You can either be nice and get a hot dog or a cheeseburger of your choice or end up like that poor fucker up there. Your choice. <laughs> I don't even think, I, I don't even think it would get to that point because cops as humans will always save their own asses first before even following orders. They I'm are all, talking, they I'm are talking, all their I'm own not, ass. I'm not, I'm not talking about normal cops. I'm talking about like the guys who are all kind of like, you know, don't have much of a mind, but they're all roided up and they're like, yeah, we need action. Woo! You know, but, but even, they, even, like, even, like, even, like, even like, those. Like, like, like Pedo Bear Eric, you know? Yeah, but even those won't go up against 15 million people because they still have self-preservation over their own ass. That's what I'm saying. If it, if it was a time, just this minority of cops against literally 15 million people out on the streets, they'd look at that shit and be like, nah, I'm going to preserve my own self first. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's face it. I don't think it would go down that way if there was that many people because the cops would be... I mean, let's ask any regular human. How likely would you be to walk into a den of 100 lions armed with nothing but a ball bat? Probably not very likely. And that, that would be like the equivalent. It wouldn't even matter if the cops were all armed and had guns and the, and the citizens weren't. That many pe people... You could take a ton of people and pile on those cops and, and obliterate them, even if the cops are armed and the people are not. So cops going to look at that and be like, yeah, I don't think I want to upset this crowd. They seem pretty peaceful. They're eating hot dogs and burgers and whatever. And, oh, I'm being offered a burger. Let's see. What do I want to do? Go up against a force that has me severely outnumbered or eat food. I think I want to eat food. So even the most arrogant action junkie cop is going to preserve their own ass. They're, they're not going to be like, no, I'm just going to go up against impossible odds and get myself killed for no reasons. They're going to they're gonna save their own asses first. Well, that would be kind of funny to see a bunch of SWAT team members out with their tents and like have like an open house on their armored truck and have their guns like all kind of in a, like one of those kind of army style, you know, like cross teed and all that stuff. They got tents set up and they're sitting there with their little George Foreman grills, you know, cooking. And then like Obama comes walking up and he's like, uh, uh, and, and, uh, uh, you know, freaking out. 
<laughs> you uh, you uh, can't uh, do that. Uh, and where's my uh, teleprompter? Uh, uh, People are waking up, and I think it's eventually going to come to stuff like that. I think ideas like, hey, let's just all get out and have, like, a massive fucking citywide barbecue. Like, ideas like that, I think, will eventually hit. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would have never thought that the Occupy movement would have been a widespread idea that would hit anywhere. You know, prior to then, I would have been thinking, nah, people are too close-minded and stupid. They could never do something like that. But yet it happened. So... I think ideas like, you know, a freaking, you know, all of a sudden everybody in every city in the United States just decides to whip out a barbecue grill and and society temporarily comes grinding to a halt because everybody's just out there having food and discussion. That's something that could happen. It, once, once that sort of idea gets popular enough. I, I never thought Occupy could happen. I would have thought that I would win the lottery once a day, every day for a year before something like Occupy could happen, but there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Before Occupy, I thought people were too stupid to do something like that. Mm -hmm. But then I got contradicted. <laughs> I mean, granted, Occupy wasn't perfect. There was a lot of mistakes made. There's a lot of things they could have done better. But still, even to have something like that happen at all, I would have thought there was no way in hell. Yeah, I think we've talked on this enough. I think so, yeah. So I think I'm going to end this hangout. Um, thanks to everybody for listening and watching who listened and watched. Love to uh, both the critical thinkers and the haters. And um, catch everybody later. <laughs>